This is going to be the third tutorial in the series about masking and this time I'm going to show you how masking can be a pretty powerful tool uh, for, uh, again let's call it photoshopping or actual treatment of pictures. So we got this picture here and the lighting is very unflattering to this lady. Um, it accentuates every pore in her skin, every wrinkle. It makes her look, you know, not, you know, the best that she could look like. So I don't want to completely erase all those, you know, uh, skin, skin features because, you know, I st she still wants to look like herself and she still, you know, wants to look her age. It, it, it's just that we want it to look more flattering to put her at the best in the best light. So of course in previous tutorials we discussed all kinds of tools uh, such as the patch tool where I can go around the crow's feet, let me do it more accurately, the crow's feet and try to find an area of the skin that is better than this one. Problem is you see how it's just as grainy. What, I'm, what I want to do in this tutorial, let me undo, is something that's not details but overall smoothing. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to duplicate the background layer and as soon as we do of course it's time to save it as a Photoshop file and I would call it face 5 fixed. Where I got a background layer and I got a layer that's a duplicate of it on the top and let me call that layer blur. First thing we're going to do is select this layer, all of it, go to the filters, go to blur, and there's actually two kinds of blur to choose from. I will show you both and let you decide which one you think is, you know, your favorite. I will start with surface blur, which, you know, skin is a surface. And under surface blur, uh, it starts looking pretty scary. I will use threshold and radius. Right now, if you like these settings, I'm on threshold 26. Threshold is how sensitive it is. If I lower it down, it's not sensitive at all. And then I start raising it. And the more I raise it, if it's too, uh, if the threshold's too high, then it simply ignores small details. I wanted to almost ignore small details, something like this. Then with a radius, it's like the spread of it, like the blurriness of it. I don't want it to be too low, not too high. I think I like these settings. Of course, this is not what the lady is going to look like eventually. This is just how much I want to smooth the skin when it's fully smooth. And I click OK. And now I got a blurred layer and a background layer. The next step will be to add a mask to the blurred layer because I don't want to use all of it. I want to use only some parts of it. And this time I'm going to add what's called a reverse mask. Not a white, but a black mask. To add a black mask instead of a white one, on the Mac I'm holding Option. If this was Windows, I'll be holding Alt. And while doing that, adding a mask. And I add a mask and it's totally black, which means it shows, it's totally transparent. It shows none of the blur. Again, if I didn't hold, I just went undo, if I didn't hold Option on the Mac or Alt on PC, um, adding a, a mask would be a white one which shows everything and hides nothing. I want the opposite. I'm holding Option and adding a mask, so I got a mask that hides everything and shows nothing. And I'm going to choose what to show by drawing white on that mask, on the blur layer. So I switch to my... Um, brush tool. By the way, as far as uh, window um, or uh, window work layout, I'm on the photography one. That's, you know, I find everything I need there. I got my brush. I got a white color. The brush itself, I'm going to right click and make it very, very soft. The softest brush possible. Um, so it's going to be very, very, you know, blurry around the edges. And the size of the brush... Uh, is going to be according to whatever facial feature I'm working on. And for right now, my opacity is 100, my flow is 100 for the brush, and I'm starting to brush over this. And you can see how every area that I brush over becomes, it reveals the blur. And yes, I know it looks like too much, but don't worry. 
it's always easy to see what you're doing when you do a little too much. And what I'm doing basically is going over only the areas that I'm trying to smooth undo. For instance, I'm careful not to go over the nose because then I'll blur the nose. So I'm going only over surfaces. This is why I used blur surface. And I'm going only over surfaces. Of course, if this was a real project, I'd be so much more careful. Like right now, I'm not going, going to go over this because I don't want to blur it. I'm definitely not going to go over the eyes or the eyelashes because I don't want to blur those. All I want to blur are the areas of the skin that are too sharp. Let me adjust the brush to be smaller so I can get into smaller areas. Let's see if I covered everything. If I want to do you know, less pronounced, I could just reduce the opacity of the brush. And... I can still do the corners of the mouth and maybe even under the mouth and very carefully the mouth itself, the lips themselves. Again, I don't want to make her look like she's made out of porcelain. I just want to make her look better. To me right now, this looks, looks too photoshopped, too smooth. Anyone can see that I've done this. But, by the way, see how you, I ended up actually drawing a mask? Everything I drew ended up a white mask. White shows the blur, black doesn't. Then what I could do is just reduce the opacity of the whole layer to my liking. Original, nothing, or everything, or somewhere in between, which still makes her look like herself. You can still see all the skin features, but just a lot less of them without the layer, with the layer, without the layer, with the layer. She looks just so, just so much better, you know, with that semi um, blurred layer showing only the blurred areas. And I can always revisit this and go, oh, maybe I want to add more under the eyes, more white opacity, a hundred, and nope, too much, undo. Or I can erase areas by drawing them back to black. If I, for instance, uh, drew on the hair, I, you know, accidentally make the hair blurry, and then let's say I continued and did something I do like doing. Oh, how do I get rid of this? I just switch the brush to black, and whatever I draw black on returns the sharpness of the layer below. Another um, approach to the same technique would be, let me hide this layer, again, make a copy of the background layer and call it G Blur, because um, some people, I've seen some tutorials, present both options to you. Instead of the surface layer, they like the Gaussian Blur and then do the same thing. So. Again, I'm going to go Filter and Blur and use Gaussian Blur. The idea with the Gaussian Blur is that it has only one slider and I'm going to go up until it barely erases the facial features that I'd like to get rid of. Just like this, until I, until I can see no um, wrinkles just about like this, like 13 in this case. And it's gonna be the same technique. Hold option and add a mask to totally make a black mask that hides this entire G blur um, layer. And then use my brush with white to start brushing in to reveal the smooth areas. I'm doing this quick because this is a recorded tutorial. You realize how important it is for the brush to be, um, sorry, 0% hardness, not 100%. It, it depends. For instance, when I get to a facial feature here, I'm going to make it 100% hard so I don't go over the nose, so I can leave little you know, areas that are untouched and be very precise about what I'm trying to touch and what I'm trying not to touch. So 
I'm playing like right now this is too hard yeah soft brush for big areas where I'm not afraid of going over details and a smaller maybe more harder brush for areas where I'm careful not to step over details. Now again, by the time I've revealed all of her skin, or almost all of it, she looks like she's made of plastic. It's, you know, some people might like that, but I don't. Uh, so at this point, I can choose to take this whole G blur area and reduce its opacity to less as much as I want. Let's do a little AB. This is how she looks like with the um, same mask, same everything, only Gaussian blur was used before, after. And this is the one with surface blur. I'm gonna let you guys decide which one you like better. Um, I'm gonna add one more thing. I personally, let's see. Yeah, I like the surface blur better. It looks uh, more natural to me. It leaves a little more of the skin's um, texture. I'm going to select this layer, hold shift and select all the way down. I selected everything and I'm gonna turn this whole thing into a smart object so I can further do things to it, to all of it. Because right now, for instance, if I apply the filter, it'll be only to the background and it would look different, look adjustments if I did some I don't know levels and change the levels see how I'm doing it only to the background looks horrible uh, I want to do things to all of them together so I'm going to combine all of them into right click convert to smart object now that it's a smart object one more thing I found that helps especially with faces is our good old friend camera raw filter and under camera raw filter, I can do two things. Under the category basic, there's a slider called texture, which I find for human faces, reducing the texture a little bit, see? Gives me a lot of control over the pores of the skin. Another thing I can do is play around with the clarity. Just be careful, if you move clarity all the way down, again, it's like blurring everything. You move clarity all the way up, ugh, it looks, you know, it looks like she's a zombie. So a little play, maybe a, a tiny little reduction in clarity, tiny little bit. I definitely want to increase the contrast. And one last thing, under the category uh, detail, I can play around with some sharpening to sharpen the areas that are sharp, but compensate with noise reduction. Again, too much noise reduction and it looks like, you know, like she's made of plastic. A little bit of noise reduction. Looks good to me. I click OK. And all of this is a smart filter because I turned this into a smart object and then I can always change my mind or see what it looked before, after. I do like it the after better it's a slight more very subtle change but it's actually uh, a big improvement and still it's not like she's you know it, it she doesn't look 15 she looks her real age only just better than the original picture made her look a little more flattering